July 1st, 2016, I am your Jesus, born incarnate. Evil must be fought first in hearts, then in the world, on battlefields, in politics, and in mass media. Evil influences are all around you. They are often insidious, and souls do not realize they are under attack. This is how evil has overtaken moral decisions and souls condone sin. If you do not use holy love as your standard bearer, you will let the seriousness of your moment-by-moment -moment decisions slip by. Once again, this plague of complacency which has diseased the heart of the world is threatening the future of the world. Do not be fooled into believing that evil is confined to a certain part of the world or to a certain false religion. It is everywhere, hidden in hearts and seeping into actions. If you do not put God first and treat neighbor as self, you are part of that evil. July 1st, 2016, Our Lady comes as Mary, refuge of holy love. She says, Praise be to Jesus. Dear children, I am using your every prayer and sacrifice as a means of withholding my son's arm of justice. It grows heavy and eager to fall and to stop the sins in the world. Pray that I am able to hold back my son's justice even longer. You do not see what he sees or understand what he understands. Tonight, I'm blessing you with my blessing of holy love. July 2nd, 2016, Our Lady comes as Mary, refuge of holy love. She says, praise be to Jesus. Moment by moment, my son's justice grows closer. She has an hourglass in front of her. I come to move the heart of the world to repentance. It is easy to get caught up in the affairs of the day and to forget the urgency of these times. It is also easy to let your hearts be ruled by popular moral standards without affirmation according to God's commandments. Every soul is called to follow the path of holy love, but few there are who take this seriously. You can only convert the heart of the world by first changing your own heart. Being an example of holy love in the world is the attitude of a truly consecrated heart and the way to convert others. The errors which rule the hearts of, the, of world leaders are the bad fruit of compromised truth. The compromise of truth leads boldly to the abuse of authority. This is why my son's heart is mournful, for he sees the direct consequences of the attitudes so contrary to holy love. I can only continue to forewarn you, but unless you have a believing heart, my efforts will be of no avail. When the hour of great distress visits earth, I will be here for you, my arms outstretched, the refuge of my heart open. Call upon me under two of my most favorite titles, Protectress of the Faith and Refuge of Holy Love. There isn't much sand left in the hourglass as she leaves. July 3rd, 2016, Our Lady comes as Mary, Refuge of Holy Love. She says, Praise be to Jesus. It is the solemn responsibility of each soul to make of his heart a fertile dwelling place for holy love. Every virtue is based upon holy love. If holy love is shallow in the heart, every virtue will be shallow. It is up to each soul to weed out that which challenges holy love. This would be other affections of the heart, such as love of appearance, popularity, some form of entertainment, power, wealth, or anything that brings status in the eyes of others. These are of no account when the soul stands before my son in judgment. What does count, love of God and neighbor as self, is of no or little importance to those who remain devoted to the world. 
Take account, therefore, of where your affections lie. Do not allow a zealous love of neighbor to become convoluted to the point where you embrace and encourage a sinful lifestyle. That is not love. Holy love is prompt to correct sin. Allow me to cultivate a beautiful rose in the garden of your heart, a rose of holy love. July 3rd, 2016, St. Joseph is here and says, Praise be to Jesus. I come once again to help fathers in their leadership role as head of the family. My brothers, you must take a firm position as to the difference between good and evil. If you can discern this properly, you can pass this skill on to your children and they will become good leaders. This is how governments and leadership roles within the secular and religious world are made strong. Tonight, I'm imparting to you my fatherly blessing. July 4th, 2016, Independence Day. The Blessed Virgin Mary says, Praise be to Jesus. I am the Immaculate Conception, patroness of your country. The future of this nation is dependent upon the ability of its citizens to discern good from evil. As it is, this is not important to the plans of many of your leaders. You have people running for office who are propelled by ambition and love of power. God's will and His commandments are the farthest thing from their minds. Honesty and transparency have taken flight from their hearts. This election will carry significant changes in its wake in terms of the choices of future Supreme Court justices. Pro-life hangs in the balance. A liberal president will support a liberal Supreme Court. That would have everlasting effects on your nation and its place in God's will and His provision. Dear children, you must pray that evil is recognized for what it is and not regarded as acceptable or desirable. July 5th, 2016, Our Lady comes as Mary, refuge of holy love. She says, Praise be to Jesus. Every wound eventually heals if it is exposed to air. In the course of life, it is so with errors of illicit behavior as well. When they are exposed to public view, they are corrected and thereby healed. But this can only happen if truth wins out in hearts. In the political realm, lies are often used to cover the reality of agendas and behaviors, allowing deceit and error to continue. Jesus desires to heal your nation and the world. He desires to correct and heal errors in governments and within the Church. It is for this reason these apparitions and some others continue as a means of drawing hearts back into the truth. When you pray, pray that the heart of the world opens to the reality of sin and evil. That is the first step to conversion. Then pray that every heart recognizes the error that he embraces himself. This is the second step to recovery. These are the prayers I offer every day with all the angels and the saints. July 6th, 2016, I am your Jesus, born incarnate. I tell you solemnly, every injustice bears the consequence of separation from me, from my provision and my mercy in this life or the next. Those who suffer injustice will be shown my tender mercy and receive their reward on earth or in heaven. Those given more responsibility in the world are required to treat such responsibility wisely and with respect, making all decisions with truthful transparency. Remember, nothing lies hidden from me. I am the just judge. Each soul is given the grace to live in righteousness and truth but he must choose it. A note is given to read Wisdom, chapter 5, 1 through 8. 
Then the righteous man will stand with great confidence in the presence of those who have afflicted him and those who make light of his labors. When they see him, they will be shaken with dreadful fear, and they will be amazed at his unexpected salvation. They will speak to one another in repentance, and in anguish of spirit they will groan and say, This is the man whom we once held in derision and made a byword of reproach, we fools. We thought that his life was madness and that his end was without honor. Why has he numbered among the sons of God, and why is his lot among the saints. So it was we who strayed from the way of truth, and the light of righteousness did not shine on us, and the sun did not rise upon us. We took our fill of the paths of lawlessness and destruction, and we journeyed through trackless deserts, but the way of the Lord we have not known. What has our arrogance profited us, and what good has our boasted wealth brought us? Another note is given to read Wisdom 6, 1 through 11. Listen, therefore, O kings, and understand. Learn, O judges of the ends of the earth. Give ear, you that rule over multitudes and boast of many nations. For your dominion was given you from the Lord, and your sovereignty from the Most High, who will search out your works and inquire into your plans. Because as servants of his kingdom you did not rule rightly, nor keep the law, nor walk according to the purpose of God. He will come upon you terribly and swiftly, because severe judgment falls on those in high places. For the lowliest man may be pardoned in mercy, but mighty men will be mightily tested. For the Lord of all will not stand in awe of anyone, nor show deference to greatness, because he himself made both small and great, and he takes thought for all alike. But a strict inquiry is in store for the mighty. To you then, O monarchs, my words are directed, that you may learn wisdom and not transgress. For they will be made holy who observe holy things in holiness, and those who have been taught them will find a defense. Therefore set your desire on my words, long for them, and you will be instructed. Another note is given to read Romans chapter 1, verse 32. Though they know God's decree that those who do such things deserve to die, they not only do them, but approve those who practice them. Scripture verses asked to be read by Jesus. July 7, 2016, Our Lady comes as Mary, refuge of holy love. She says, Praise be to Jesus. Ever since Lucifer's fall from heaven, there has been evil in the world. It is important that souls realize this and pray to discern good from evil. Satan does not want you to recognize that there are good choices and evil choices out there. Evil masquerades as opinions and political choices. Certainly you must, as Christians, realize that abortion is evil and that any politician who supports abortion is supporting evil. The evil one makes abortion appear as a right and not a sin. It is the same with homosexuality and same-sex marriage. These are choices between good and evil not freedom or lack of freedom. I come to you to help you direct your free will choices into alignment with the will of God. This is the only course to peace and security in the world. July 8, 2016, Our Lady comes as Mary, refuge of holy love. She says, Praise be to Jesus. The silent victims of abortion grieve my heart very much. They are the victims of compromised truth and abusive authority. They cannot defend themselves or speak for themselves. They will never have the opportunity to develop the talents and strengths God gave them. Many would have had vocations or great leadership capabilities. Today in the world there is much violence. This, too, is the bad fruit of the compromise of truth and the abuse of authority. 
You must not seek to eradicate violence and terrorism in the world and ignore violence in the womb. Such a travesty carries grave consequences. The society that accepts one type of violence moves on to act violently to solve other problems. The gift of life is not respected at any stage. Mankind must make amends to God for his disregard for life at any stage, conception to natural death. Do not grieve, my beloved son, further by your arrogance. Make atonement to our united hearts. July 8th, 2016. Jesus is here with his heart exposed. He says, I am your Jesus, born incarnate. My brothers and sisters, pray with me that the Holy Spirit is able to inspire souls not to support politicians that are pro-abortion. The future of the world depends on this. Tonight, I'm blessing you with my blessing of divine love. July 9th, 2016, I am your Jesus, born incarnate. The greatest sorrow of my heart is man's disregard for the commandments. Even when I simplify these commandments with these messages of holy love, man pays no heed. He clothes his erroneous decisions in popular opinion and words such as tolerance and political correctness. I cannot choose right from wrong for anyone. All I can do is point the way. This is why mankind must develop a keen awareness of good versus evil. Not to do so lends strength to evil. You see my most mournful heart which suffers the arrows of the compromise of truth and the abuse of authority. These are the hallmarks of this generation which rationalizes moral degeneration. Do not follow suit as so many do. Be courageous in finding the truth and pursuing it. July 10th, 2016, Our Lady comes as Mary, refuge of holy love. She says, Praise be to Jesus. Dear children, I invite you to see that what is in your heart in the present moment affects your future moments. If you have holy love in your heart in the present moment, it is most likely to meet you in the future moment. This is why I say what is in your heart is then in the world around you. Hatred and violence do not spring up out of nowhere. They are nurtured in the heart and then born out in the world. The future is never a blank slate, but is affected by every present moment. This is the reason it is so important not to nurture grudges or to hang on to unforgiveness. These things are then acted upon in some random future moment. A peaceful heart bears the fruit of a peaceful future. A heart caught up in turmoil, anger, and hate bears such bad fruits in future moments. God the Father gives you every present moment. It is as though he is handing you the thread to weave the tapestry of your life. You can make of it unrelated knots or a beautiful design of God's will in action. Every present moment is yours to design according to what is in your heart. July 11, 2016, I am your Jesus, born incarnate. Whenever evil is exposed and identified, it is a grace. The light of truth weakens any evil influence. Whatever lies hidden in the darkness works through deceit. Children of the light are not afraid to recognize any influence which may stand in the way of deeper holiness and to oppose it. Never place yourself above the influence of Satan's tactics. This is an open invitation to his greater power in your life. Always be ready to reform any area of spiritual weakness with humility. Most in the world today do not recognize good versus evil. Therefore, Satan has free reign in their hearts and in the world around them. This is a chilling fact and influence on the heart of the world. 
It is no wonder sins have become political issues and candidates who support sin are considered for public office. You must never shrink from standing for the truth. This is the way to expose and oppose evil. Be my instruments in the world. July 11, 2016, Jesus is here with his heart exposed. He says, I am your Jesus, born incarnate. My brothers and sisters, it is important that souls recognize good as opposed to evil. This is the key to the conversion of the heart of the world. Holy love defines good, and that is why I come to you so often with these messages. Be united in your efforts to convert the heart of the world. Tonight, I am extending to you my blessing of divine love. July 12, 2016, Our Lady comes as Mary, refuge of holy love. She says, Praise be to Jesus. I come to you not just for some, but for all, all people and all nations. As I have told you, nefarious evil forces have united. They are promoting conflict, confusion, and anarchy around the world. They are using the old wound of racism in this country to inspire violence. I have come to tell you, race is of no account before God. It is not a reason to act out against one another. Peace matters. I am calling all religious leaders to unite in an effort to correct the heart of the world. The conscience of the world has grown dim as to the difference between good and evil. Rationalization has taken over sound moral judgment. God's commandments are no longer a consideration. Holy love defines good. Base your thoughts, words, and deeds upon the love of God above all else and your neighbor as self. This is the way to climb out of moral decadence. Religious leaders must take up this common cause. Do not look at your differences. Be united in this good and truth. July 13th, 2016, the Feast of Rosa Mystica. Our Lady comes as Rosa Mystica. She says, Praise be to Jesus. I tell you once again solemnly, if good does not unite with good, evil forces will continue to gain ground, both in hearts and in the world. You can see this happening all around you in politics, anarchy and forms of violence and terrorism. Satan's plan is to destroy the world as you know it. He is using every form of technology to his advantage. You have the power to stop him through unity in prayer. Use your rosaries as your weapon of choice. Unite to help people to recognize evil and to choose good through love of God and neighbor. Use holy love as your standard of good and truth. Do not allow any compromise in holy love to weaken your resolve to always choose good over evil. I am calling on you to unite in the truth. These are times of great confusion when many of my children no longer recognize good or evil. In the effort of good, you must uncover Satan's deceit. I, your Heavenly Mother, will help you. July 14, 2016, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, I am the eternal now. I have come to correct the heart of the world. You, O oh man of earth, try my patience and tempt my justice. You continue to stay to slay the life I give you in the womb. You summarily transgress my commandments. You choose licentious lifestyles, labeling these sins as legal rights. I am calling upon all people and all nations to take heed of the direction they are following. You are not paying heed as to what is right and what is wrong in my eyes. You do not care what is good and what is evil. 
you are obedient only to your own free will and your own desires. The farther away you get from my will, the closer you are to my justice. I offer you the way back to my divine will through holy love. Choose to love me above all else and your neighbor as yourself. Then spread this solution to earth's woes to all people and all nations. Do not confine your effort to one denomination, race, or creed. The conscience of the world is formed of each soul. Unite in an all-embracing effort to bring the heart of the world out of the abyss of moral decay and into the light of truth. The evils of the day test your ability to step away from popular amoral choices and to embrace my divine will and love for you. Choose wisely. I am watching and hoping for your wisdom. July 14th, 2016, Our Lady comes as Mary, refuge of holy love. She says, Praise be to Jesus. It is the hour of grave decision for your nation and for the world. Good must conform with good and not be bullied into submission with evil. Invisible lines between differences in ways of worship, denominations, and labels must not be the deciding factor in making these messages known. These are the times when people do not recognize good or evil, and therefore do not decide according to God's law of holy love, but according to what pleases them. You must be united in one consolidated effort to expose evil and those who support and promote evil. Do not allow your government or politicians to decide moral issues for you. Man cannot change God's commandments to suit himself. Return to the moral standard of holy love. All of what I am saying to you should be shouted from the pulpits of the world and expounded upon by every religious leader. Your leadership, for the most part, is failing you. Help me to change the heart of the world without waiting for the support of leaders, many of whom enjoy their position but fail to lead spiritually. Many souls do not see the direction in which they are headed. If you are a spiritual leader, make every effort to unite with other spiritual leaders in this effort to change the heart of the world. July 15, 2016, Our Lady comes as Mary, refuge of holy love. She says, Praise be to Jesus. It is impossible to make peace with those who do not desire peace. In righteousness, you must defend innocent lives. If you wait for each new act of terrorism to react, you are once again treating the symptoms, not the disease. There is a center of operations that oversees radical Islamic terrorism. It must be eradicated in order to save countless lives. Pretending that terrorism is not a problem is not the solution. Cordially inviting thousands of refugees into this country is reckless, to say the least. The security of the world is being jeopardized in the name of humanitarianism. It takes a strong and honest leader to deal with the reality of this threat. Presently, your country does not have one. I am waiting for religious leaders to take a stand on this issue. This is not the time to placate or accommodate poor leadership. Church hierarchy must not remain silent, but support every effort to combat the evils of terrorism. That is how you lead not as idle observers. Be bold in applying the gospel message to this very desperate situation. You do not live in these times for no reason or for your own reasons. Each one is here by God's will to do His will. 
A note is given to read Luke chapter 3, verse 9. Even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Scripture verses asked to be read by Mary, Refuge of Holy Love. July 15th, 2016. Jesus is here with his heart exposed. He says, I am your Jesus, born incarnate. My brothers and sisters, let my coming to you once again this evening be a sign of the urgency of these times. You must pray for peace in the heart of the world through holy love. Tonight, I'm blessing you with the blessing of my divine love. July 16th, 2016, Our Lady comes as Mary, refuge of holy love. She says, Praise be to Jesus. There is so much unrest in the world because there is so much unrest in hearts. Souls are focused on satisfying self and not on pleasing God. All that you have, reputation, wealth, modern technology, even your health, is of no avail to you unless you ultimately use it to please God. It is God's will that provides and oversees your every attribute. Unselfishness gains you much in God's eyes, and He is most generous with those who use what they have to help others. He steps back, however, from those who seek only their own gain. Even those who hold evil goals in their hearts are still my children and God's children. There is hope in praying for such as these. Hope that their convoluted thinking will be corrected and their hearts converted. If there was no hope, I would not continue to come to you and ask for prayers for the conversion of the heart of the world. Your peace and security lies in always choosing good over evil. July 17th, 2016, Our Lady comes as Mary, Refuge of Holy Love. There is a map of the U.S. floating in front of her. She says, Praise be to Jesus. I am here today to address the heart of your nation, which grows more and more arrogant in its decisions against God's holy and divine will. Your nation is on the precipice about to choose either good or evil, in this upcoming presidential election. The abyss before you is your departure from God's laws, which protect life in the womb, honesty in the reality of truth, and God's commandments. To choose any candidate contrary to these maxims will plunge your nation deep into the abyss of moral decadence. You as a nation will be unable to recover Such choices will call upon God's justice. The heart of your nation has little time to wake up to the reality of truth as to the path some are eager to lead her upon. Will you follow the errors of man or the will of God? Do not for a minute think that the accommodation of sin is your passport to success and salvation. Do not pander favor by supporting those who think so. I am here today to awaken the heart of your nation to the truth of political errors and unprecedented ambition based upon evil. There is no truth that can justify sin. The heart of your nation needs to step out of its cocoon of confusion and allow its conscience to be transformed as a butterfly in God's will, which is... Holy Love. July 17th, 2016, Our Lady comes as Rosa Mystica. She says, Praise be to Jesus. Please pray that St. Michael lends his power to the angels of all those who are coming into Cleveland for the convention. Pray that the guardian angels of those who come dissuade hearts from any evil. 
July 18th, 2016, Our Lady comes as Mary, refuge of holy love. She says, Praise be to Jesus. Because righteousness has eroded in hearts, you now have violence, terror, and anarchy in your streets. Revoking the right to bear arms is not the solution. I have come with this solution, which is holy love. These days, people grab a hold of any cause as a reason to act out. There are always those who vehemently make causes out of race and religion. Good people are being ambushed and martyred as victims of hatred in hearts. Killing policemen who work to physically protect everyone opens the door to greater anarchy and violence. There are those behind the scenes encouraging this as a means of collapsing this government. A weakened America would cooperate more readily with the One World Order. That is the goal of those funding these demonstrations and riots. Do not be distracted by non-issues such as global warming. Once again, I ask you to pray for the conversion of the heart of the world. Hope is in the victory of truth in every conscience. July 18th, 2016, Our Lady comes as Mary, refuge of holy love. She says, Praise be to Jesus. I have returned to remind you that you will not have peace in the world until you have peace in the womb. Peoples and nations are methodically being led away from the truth of the difference between good and evil. Confusion supports any cause readily. July 18th, 2016, Jesus is here with his heart exposed. He says, I am your Jesus, born incarnate. My brothers and sisters, tonight I ask with love that each of you redefines your goals in life and forms them into victories of holy love. This is the way to the victory of truth. Tonight, I'm blessing you with my blessing of divine love. July 19th, 2016, Our Lady comes as Mary, refuge of holy love. She says, Praise be to Jesus. My daughter, recall the first time I appeared to you, when the fifty Hail Mary beads changed into the shapes of the fifty states. Now more than ever is the time when I need rosaries for your country. The citizens of this nation must recognize the truth. Domestic terrorism is a reality. To pretend, as your president does, that it is not, does not make it disappear. Refusing to name the instigator, radical Islam, does not change or conquer the enemy. I warned you that if hearts did not change, God would be forced to lift his hand of protection. My call to you is to live and propagate holy love, which is the arch enemy of every thought or action which promotes terrorism. Many will need to physically defend themselves against random acts of violence. In a year when you are choosing a president, choose the one who lives in the truth. The future of your nation depends upon it. Do not allow politics to cloud the reality of the truth. You need a strong leader, not just a politician, which is what you have now. The more rosaries you give me for your country, the greater the chances of the victory of truth. July 20th, 2016, Our Lady comes as Mary, refuge of holy love. She says, Praise be to Jesus. Today I wish to describe to you the qualifications of a good presidential candidate, a candidate deserving of your support. Such a candidate is committed to supporting life from conception to natural death. He or she does not use the destruction of life in the womb as a means of garnering political favor. A good candidate is one who is transparent, holding no secret hidden agendas in the heart, such as weakening the United States so the nation is more open to the one world order. 
truthfulness bears the fruit of transparency. Therefore, one who depends upon lies to protect self is not a good candidate. A good candidate holds the safety and welfare of the citizenry first and foremost in the heart. Therefore, allowing open borders or thousands of refugees from terror-based nations to enter the country would not be a consideration. A good candidate lives by and supports the commandments of God, working always to fulfill God's will through holy love. You should not try to redefine your Christian morals to fit any certain candidate. The candidate needs to fit his goals into the righteousness of holy love, defining holy love according to these terms I have given you. July 21st, 2016, Our Lady comes as Mary, refuge of holy love. She says, Praise be to Jesus. These days, people do not recognize the difference between good and evil. Moreover, they do not look for the difference. In this country, you have an upcoming presidential election. This is not politics as usual. I caution you, it is a choice between good and evil. If you study the candidates and their backgrounds with the winnowing fan of holy love, the choice heaven supports should be clear. Your country cannot continue to be pulled apart at the seams. It needs to be mended, not by means of accepting everyone's point of view, but by supporting good and rejecting evil. If your choices support the popularity of evil, your nation will never recover. It is the hour when good must unite with good in order for truth to be victorious. Otherwise, evil is emboldened and strengthened. Set egos aside and unite for the welfare of the whole nation. Division weakens. Unity strengthens. As I have told you before, evil forces are strong as they are united. Those who stand for good must do no less. July 22nd, 2016, Our Lady comes as Mary, refuge of holy love. She says, Praise be to Jesus. The inability to distinguish good as apart from evil has weakened the heart of your nation and the heart of the world. This is why power is given over to the wrong people, and sin is lauded as acceptable. In this nation, the spirit of those who sit on the Supreme Court sets the tone for the spirit of the country. If the court is liberal, the Constitution will not be upheld. These liberal positions could be set in place for decades, as the justices are set in place for decades. Therefore, the flavor of sound spirituality would not rebound. You must consider this as you choose your next president. This inability to discern good from evil is a spirit which pervades governments, court systems, religious communities, and most often begins in families. It is why sin is discouraged from being exposed from the pulpit. It is this spirit that inspires terrorism and random acts of violence. The angels are frustrated by this spirit. Pray for the increase of power in the hands of all the angels. July 22, 2016, Jesus is here with his heart exposed. He says, I am your Jesus, born incarnate. My brothers and sisters, tonight I invite each one of you to pray that your angels powerfully inspire you as to what is good and what is evil, thus helping you in your every decision. Tonight I am imparting to you my blessing of divine love. July 23, 2016, Our Lady comes as Mary, Refuge of Holy Love. She says, Praise be to Jesus. 
Dear children, as this upcoming election is so important to the future of your country and the salvation of souls, I am requesting that every night at the Rosary you add the intention of the election of good over evil. Please comprehend that this is no ordinary election, but one that will impact the morals and the security of your nation. Political ambition and lies must not mask this. Whom you elect will be given the privilege of selecting more Supreme Court justices, who in turn will set the moral standards and the strength of your Constitution in place. Security policies must be a consideration in your choice. Do you value the borders of your nation, or do you desire to recklessly allow anyone into your midst without regard for their intentions? This is not the hour in the history of man to carelessly accept sin and everyone of questionable value in the name of false charity. In the name of love, understand how important it is to confront evil and to embrace truth. False promises beget false security. It is most important, therefore, to choose a candidate who lives in the truth and is not enamored with self, ambition, and power. Do not choose a politician, but a leader. I can only advise and warn you. I pray for your wisdom as Election Day draws near. A note is given to read Ephesians chapter 6. 10 through 17. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we are not contending against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against the powers, against the world rulers of this present darkness, against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your loins with truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the equipment of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you can quench all the flaming darts of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Scripture verses asked to be read by Mary, Refuge of Holy Love. July 24, 2016 Our Lady comes as Our Lady of Grace. She says, Praise be to Jesus. Untold graces are now being poured into the heart of this nation to help souls to see the truth of the consequences of their choices in the upcoming election. You, my children, must pray that souls respond to these graces and have the wisdom to see the truth. This grace is sent to help souls to see past empty rhetoric and dangerous goals. Your nation needs to once again become a strong leader and example of truth to other nations. Continued and increased support of abortion places a cloud of confusion over the conscience of your country. Betrayal to your ally Israel further jeopardizes your own national security. You are aiding your enemies and betraying your allies. Where is the outcry on behalf of justice? Weakening this country only strengthens your enemies. You cannot appease evil and still be righteous. Good and evil cannot unite as one without compromise. Your choices will become more clear if you pray for the grace to recognize the truth. A note is given to read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, 9-12. through 12. The coming of the lawless one by the activity of Satan will be with all power and with pretended signs and wonders, and with all wicked deception for those who are to perish, because they refused to love the truth and so be saved. 
Therefore God sends upon them a strong delusion to make them believe what is false, so that all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Scripture verses asked to be read by Our Lady of Grace. July 25th, 2016. Jesus is here with his heart exposed. He says, I am your Jesus, born incarnate. My brothers and sisters, the sign of a good candidate is that he or she supports life in the womb. The opposite is evil, to support abortion. Please pray that all people and all nations receive the grace to discern good from evil. Tonight, I'm blessing you with my blessing of divine love. July 26th, 2016, Our Lady comes as Mary, refuge of holy love. She says, Praise be to Jesus. Confide your heart to holy love and you will be living in the divine will of God. Then all paths will be made clear to you. You will be able to discern good from evil. Confusion will be lifted from your heart. Holy love is the school of righteousness. Holy love orchestrates your salvation. Outside of holy love, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven, for no one enters who does not love God above all else and neighbor as self. The heart that does not abide in holy love slips easily into every type of sin, licentiousness and debauchery. Such a heart is easily misled, for he cannot distinguish good from evil. You can most readily see that it is lack of holy love in hearts which is leading the world astray through faulty and weak leadership, and in some cases, no leadership at all. I am giving you the cure for earth's woes through these messages. You must accept it. July 27, 2016, Our Lady comes as Mary, refuge of holy love. She says, Praise be to Jesus. If your home was on, a, on fire and under siege by enemy armies, would it do you any good to ignore the danger and not identify the enemy? In essence, that is what many in your country, including your president, are doing in not recognizing radical Islam as a threat ISIS is at war with Christianity and all those opposed to their extremist beliefs. Therefore, we must be at war with them. Not to recognize this leaves us defenseless and most vulnerable. Refusing to acknowledge the truth of the enemy's existence does not render him less powerful. In fact, such a cavalier attitude towards imminent danger empowers the enemy the leaders of this country must live in the truth. Disregard for the reality of the truth does not change it or fool the wise. Not living in the truth of the danger of ISIS is a powerful weapon in Satan's hands. July 29, 2016, Our Lady comes as Mary, refuge of holy love. She says, Praise be to Jesus. I have come to help you understand, my children, that trust becomes a pawn in the hands of the insincere. Do not place your trust in anyone whose actions do not reflect their words. Such a one is undeserving of your confidence. It is very easy to say or to promise anything, but the truth can only be found in the fulfillment of each word or promise. Those in public life mirror their past history of actions. Do not therefore place your confidence in mere words, but in the actions which should reflect holy love. July 28, 2016, Our Lady comes as Mary, refuge of holy love. She says, Praise be to Jesus. Never before has your nation been so polarized politically. This is the result of opposing moral standards. On the one hand, you have the attitude that there is no accountability for untruth and deception. This carries over to the support of abortion. 
Opposing these viewpoints and attitudes are those who support the truth and Christian moral standards, thus opposing abortion. The future of your nation for generations to come is at stake. Do not allow Satan to carry away your rights and freedoms by electing one who offers no solutions to the nation's problems. You cannot continue to place your faith and trust in someone devoted to power and self-importance and has no concern for the most vulnerable of the citizenry, the unborn. Each one of you has the grave responsibility of praying that right wins out in this election. July 29, 2016, Jesus is here with his heart exposed. He says, I am your Jesus, born incarnate. My brothers and sisters, if you accept whatever the Father sends you at any given moment, then you are living in holy love. I can use this surrender to correct the heart of the world. Tonight, I am blessing you with my blessing of divine love. July 30th, 2016, Our Lady comes as Mary, refuge of holy love. She says, Praise be to Jesus. Dear children, come into the refuge of my heart, where I will endorse your best efforts with my grace. Then you will easily see the path Jesus is calling you upon. Apart from grace, the way ahead remains obscure. You do not clearly see the obstacles placed in your way. Your choices are very often not God's choices, and confusion becomes a way of life. Lack of response to grace leads the soul into complacency. Complacency is fueled by the inability to discern good from evil. This is the spirit which prevails over the heart of the world. It is a grace that helps you to realize this and to pray against it. If you are listening to these messages, you have the responsibility to pray for avenues to propagate them. Grace will enlighten you. July 31st, 2016, St. John Vianney, the Cure de Ars, and patron of priests, says, Praise be to Jesus. I have come once again to address all bishops. My brothers in Christ, to you has been given the yoke of leadership. Draw your flock under the wing of righteousness. Do not seek to be popular first or to gain money above all else. Your flock will increase if you teach sound doctrine. You will have sufficient funds if you trust, if you trust first and foremost in God's provision. You must stand for the truth and oppose compromise and confusion. These days people long for structure, although they do not realize it. You, dear brothers, are in a position to give guidelines and principles which have been long-standing and church-approved. Do not try to redefine sin or church doctrine to suit the people. Rather, Try to recommit hearts which are compromised to the truth. People look to you for sound leadership. Unfortunately, this trust in title and authority is not always warranted. Jesus placed you in the position you are in to bring conformity to the truths of the faith. Are you leading in this way or not? A note is given to read 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 2-4. through 4. Tend the flock of God that is your charge, not by constraint, but willingly, not for shameful gain, but eagerly, not as domineering over those in your charge, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd is manifested, you will obtain the unfading crown of glory. Scripture verses asked to be read by St. John Vianney. July 31st, 2016, Our Lady comes as Mary, refuge of holy love. She says, Praise be to Jesus. Many errors in judgment are about to surface. Some will be beneficial to the heart of the world, others not. To those who persevere in personal holiness, many graces will be given, and all that hinders them 
will be overcome.